Hello my friend, welcome to my Shinfei Zazib, I hope that you are well. Let's now solve together a real problem using the framework that we just learned about and also tools such as Google, Stack Overflow and MDN. And here is our very simple uh, problem. So let's say that we work for a company that breeds smart home thermometer. And our most recent task is this. So, given an array of temperature of one day, calculate the temperature, amplitude, and keep in mind that sometimes there may be a sensor error. And they give us this array of data, for example. So, what should we do here? How we do we solve this problem? And this is actually a pretty simple problem, huh? but it still shows as the fundamental logic of solving problems in any uh, programs. Again, using the framework that I just showed you before. And so, the two most important part of that is to understand the problem and to bring up the problem into smaller sub-problems. So, let's start by understanding the problem a little bit better by asking some questions. So, first of all, they want us to calculate the temperature amplitude. But what actually is that? So we can write down here what is temperature amplitude. Okay, and the answer to that is that is the, the difference between the highest and the lowest temperature in the array. So, answer difference between highest and lower temp. Let's write it here directly. Answer and difference between highest. The new line, I think it's more pretty like this between highest and lowest temperature. Temperature. Uh, and so, this is the value that we will have to return from the function. Then we may ask. Well, that's quite nice, but how do we actually calculate the highest and the lowest temperature in an array? So, let's write that question here. Okay, maybe it would be something like this one. So, how to uh, compute the uh, Yes, the max and mean temperatures. Temperatures. Okay? And finally, they also tell us here that the sometimes here may be a sensor error. So what does a sensor error look like? So what sensor error and what to do when one occurs? So let's write this question also. So what sensor error? Okay. And what to do in this case? And here the answer is probably to just ignore the error. Now here from our data we can actually see what an error looks like. So it is uh, this uh, string here, as you can see. Okay, but it's good to have an idea of all of this question so that we now really understand the problem that we need to solve. And so I think with this here, we do have pretty good idea. 
So now, given our understanding of the problem, let's try to break the problem up into the smaller sub-problems. So first, we need to make it the sensor error actually in yard. So as I was saying, the answer to what to do here is to just ignore the sensor errors and simply work with the rest of the data. Okay? So here, let's write here. So how to in your errors. Okay? After this, there is another task is gonna be is to find the max value in temperature array. So next one is to find max value in temperature array. And of course another task is to find the minimum value. So the same thing. Find the find mean value in temperature array. And also we have another task is gonna to be subtract mean value from max value and then return it. Okay? So let's do it. So subtract mean from max and return it. So subtracting mean from max is of course the amplitude. And so it's what we turn. And so all of these are simple steps. So imagine we have a big problem. But it is good to have an idea on how we will solve this problem. And so that's why I wrote down every single step of the way here. So let's start writing a function. So all tools they don't tell us that we should write a function here. Whenever we encounter a task like this, it's a good idea to write function for it. So let's call uh, this function const const sorry calc temp amplitude amplitude. Okay. And so this function will receive an array of temperature, of course. So function, and here I will give him temps. Okay? Good. So let's again just call that temps. And so now we are going to start to work on solving this problem. And let's start here with finding the maximum and the minimum value in this array. We can deal with the errors a little bit later, don't worry. Now, probably we don't know yet how to do that based on what we just learned, right? I mean, we are already have the tools for sure, but this requires a little bit of thinking. And if we don't know yet how to think about this kind of problems, it's a good idea to do some research. And so, we will now use Google to uh, research how we can find a maximum value in array. And so that's what I mean uh, when I said we should do some research and use Google whenever we need to. Okay? So what I, uh, I like to do is to just write here, so JavaScript, get max value Okay, in array. Oops. And then be as descriptive as possible of what I want to read to achieve. So let's say get max value in array. Okay. And so don't be afraid to ask Google this kind of question whenever you are stuck yourself. Huh? Okay. Now we get here a couple of replays basically, but I'm interested in showing you a stack overflow. Okay? So, Stack Overflow is a website of questions and answers. And most of the time, someone 
already had the same question as we have. And so then they ask that question on Stack Overflow and we can then go there and find the response. And this one here sounds uh, good, right? So find the, the min-max element of an array in JavaScript. So let's click here. But now here the problem is going to be that at this point you will not understand most of the solution. No? For example, this one here talk about prototype. Okay? So you will not understand this. <clears throat> also, for example, uh, this one you are not uh, able for this moment. Okay? We continue, we continue, we continue. Uh, tac, 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 tac. Uh, tac, 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 tac. Where is the, the good solution for us? Not this one, not this one, not this one also. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Maybe, maybe this one, I think this one, not this one, of course, because you don't know what is reduced. Uh, maybe uh, not infinity also. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Check, 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 check. Not this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, you see, I have searched all the solution because a lot of them, you don't understand them. So I am... Uh, Reading directly what is the, the simple solution based what we have learned before. Okay? And usually the first solution is always the best one, or the first or the second. Okay? In most of cases. But in this case, we just scroll a little bit more uh, so that we can find a solution that we can implement with the tools that we already learned about. So, what they are doing here is to start by defining the first element, okay, <clears throat> of the array as max value. So in the beginning, the basically assume that the maximum value of the array is the first element. And then, from here, they look through the array of over the array. And in each iteration, here they test if the current value is greater than the maximum value and if it is then the new maximum here becomes the current element in the array okay does that sound uh, like good idea well i think that it does so let's try to implement this ourselves and then i will try to explain you a little bit better why this is a good solution. So let's create a for loop here. And of course, we don't need to copy the code here from this site. Usually, it is best to understand the solution and then trying to implement it on yourself. So not copying the code exactly from Stack Overflow. So let's start with the counter. <coughs> so let I equal zero and even through here they are starting at one but never mind we will just do it like we have always been doing it so I must stay below the length of the array that we are looping over and in this case that's the temperature array right so I less than Tom's dot length okay and then I make e plus plus good something new at this point and actually before we do, do we do the loop we need to create that max variable that they have here so let's do that so let max equal terms of zero, the first value. Same thing here. So at the very first element, 
So again, we will start by assuming that the first element of the array is the maximum. And that's because we didn't loop over the array yet at this point. So this is similar to the challenge in the last section where we start out with the sum set to zero. So that was a good starter value. And in this case, a good starting point is simply the first value of the array. And now let's implement that logic here. So if if the current value, so if terms i, okay, so that term at this position, so the current position is greater than max. Then, in this case, the maximum value will become this new value. So, times e, because it's greater. Normal. Good. So, that makes sense, right? Because if the current value in the array is greater than the maximum, well, then that value should be the maximum. So, if I start by number 2, and I find number 4, the maximum is 4, so the maximum value becomes 4. Okay? And now, let's simply log it to the console. Here. Look. Maximum value. And remember that from now, I will start using the snippet that we defined in the first video of the section. Okay? So I just type log, hit return, and then max. Okay. Good. And now, <clears throat> just to test this function, of course, let's call it with an array of just uh, some value. So let's do it. Calc. And here I will give him an array, for example, uh, 6, 5, and 8. Okay? And so now it's very obvious what the result should be. And so I already save it. And so probably we know I already have to result here in the console. Not yet. So let's see. Okay, do you see? It's 8. So let's add something else here, like for example uh, 15. Here, of course, not here. Here. Like this. Okay. And so now the maximum value will be 15. Good. And so the logic here works. So let's get rid uh, of this uh, 15 value. We don't need it. It is just to analyze what happens. So in the beginning, before we even start a loop, the max will be the first element of the array. So 6 in this case. Okay. So I'll just put it here. Oops. Here. 6. Maximum value is 6 in the beginning. Then the loop starts at the first position. So that's 6. So the here, then we ask, is 3... Uh, is there... Uh, uh, 6 and 6? No, it is not. So nothing happens, then in the next iteration of the loop, we are at 5. So then the question is, is 5 greater than 6, which is the current maximum? And what is the answer? No, it isn't. In next iteration of the loop, which is 8. And so the question is, is 8 greater than 6, which is the current maximum? <coughs> yes, it is. And so we change the max value here by 8. Okay? And we have finished the loop iteration, then we are done. And so the result in the end is that max is equal to 8. Alright? Does that make sense? So we solve this problem here. 
So the sub problem where we found the max value, but now we need to do the same for the minimum value. And hopefully you can see how that one works because it's pretty much in the same way. So let's say the same thing here. Let mean equal times zero. The same thing. Okay? And all we need to do now is to add another line to this loop so we can do it all in one go. So now, what we are going to say is if the current temperature is less than the minimum, then that should become the new minimum. Okay? So I just put uh, in one line this one because uh, we don't need uh, curly brackets here. It is just one restriction. So I remove this one. I don't need it. And I will make another test for the if value here. So if uh, temp is less than minimum value, so the same thing, minimum value becomes the terms E, the same thing, okay, because it is less and greater for comparison. And actually, since we are using this uh, here so many times, let's create a variable for that. So, here I will use const current temperature current temp in uppercase temp respect so equals temps e like this okay and now I am selecting temps uh, e and then control uh, plus d so like this okay Ctrl plus D, Ctrl plus D, oops, I will start, I forgot this one, no, Ctrl plus D, I will not use, I repeat, I select this one, the first one, so Ctrl plus D, 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 I have a four, and now what I will do, just like this, current, no. <laughs> very quick, do you see, I have used, I am using the, the shortcut Ctrl plus D, I, I have, uh, do it, four times by beginning from, from the first one and now just to see again if it works so let's log uh, in the console here max and the mean value so let's add another value here for example uh, four or three what you want four And now, what do you expect when I uh, load again? So the max should be 8 and the mean should be 4. Okay? And that's the case. <clears throat> Next up, we can then tackle the problem of ignoring errors. So, what that means uh, is that we do not want to include this uh, error here. Right? Or in other words, this logic here should only run if we actually have a number here. Okay? So basically, if the current element is a number only, then it makes sense to make it this sort of comparison. And so we can use something that we learned in the last section, which is the continue keyword, remember? So let's say if the type of the current temperature is different from a number, then continue. Okay? So here, like this, if type, uh, sorry, after this, after, because I've saved it here, if type of current temp is different from number, so in this case, what we will do, we continue. Okay? And remember that continue means that the rest of the iteration will not be executed. Remember this. So the current iteration will be finished and then it moves 
on the right to the next one. And so in this case, what happens is as soon as the loop reach this part here, since it is not a number, then none of the logic down here is executed. And then we move on to number nine, right? Okay, so let's now actually call uh, clock temp amplitude with this array temperature. And, and now, I load, indeed, we have our max and min temperature. So let's confirm that uh, that's correct. And yes, so it is 17, the maximum value and minus 6 is the minimum. Awesome. So that works. Now there is only the easy part left, which is to return the amplitude. So return, so simple, maximum value minus minimum value. Okay? And here, let's store this uh, variable. Uh, we store the result here into a, a variable. You can uh, call it amplitude. Okay? And then, we log it to the console. So I don't need this. You can let it, no problem. We log it to the console. Amplitude. And now what we get? 23. Awesome. We did a great job here in solving this problem. And again, we did it because <clears throat> we first understood it correctly and then we broke it up into these uh, sub problems. Okay? But now, let's suppose that after we are done with our solution, the project managers tell us that the function should actually receive two arrays of temperature and not just one, but the rest of the function should work just the same. Okay? So, well, let's quickly write uh, that problem uh, one here. Okay? <clears throat> so, problem two, oh, sorry, problem one, and now maybe I can add the problem two here, maybe uh, directly from here, oh, and uh, now here, maybe here. So, problem two, so, what is the problem too? Is a function should now receive two arrays of temperature. Temperature. So let's write again, understanding uh, the problem. From here, like the copy. Okay. So, so we can probably ask uh, the question when we have two arrays, so with uh, two arrays, do we need to implement the same functionality twice? So should uh, we, for example, implement functionality functionality twice and well what is the answer in this case answer is with two arrays oops so with two arrays sorry for our Mistake, huh? Eh? 
is no, of course, no, just merge to raise. So simple. And now we need to to the again again uh, break this one up into sub uh, problems. Okay, so we copy this one. This. And in this case, that just we well, really just one uh, sub problem, which is how to merge to array. Okay. But we can see that is probably the best thing to do, right? So imagine that we have uh, this uh, same function, but instead of receiving this one here, so just one array, it gets two. Then if we can merge these two arrays into one, then the rest of the logic could stay exactly the same. Okay, and here the problem should actually be just merge two arrays. Okay, so here the answer is merge. Uh, no, sorry. It's so simple. Merge to arrays. So that's our sub problem that we will uh, now solve. So let's now do some more research here. So I think we could uh, actually come up with our uh, own solution here. But really, I just want in this video to use the tools that we have to solve problems on our own with uh, research. So I want to show you how developer goes about doing these things. So JavaScript, right here, I repeat, JavaScript merge to arrays. Okay? So as you can see, we have uh, this result, uh, W3Schools, it is a very good website. And also, we have uh, Mozilla developers, <coughs> that I told you uh, about in the last video. And here also we have, in the first, first result, Stack Overflow again. So let's uh, click in this uh, first uh, answer, and let's see. So here we see that apparently there is like a concat method. Okay, so here we can also see array dot concat. So that uh, seems to be the solution. And I remember that previously on that Google result page, here, as you can see, there was something about that. So this is a uh, first year. So the MDN uh, page is also about the concat method. So let's now actually explore the MDN website a little bit, okay? And so I will just uh, resize uh, this page to see uh, something good. And so MDN looks like this, uh, this, and once more it made change by the time uh, you are watching this video, but the core functionality will still be there. So there's always a, so a short description about uh, the functionality and then some uh, quick example. Then here on the left side, we can actually see all the method about the array. Okay, we have all the method. Lot of, lot of. And that's because we are right now on the page about an array method. So concat is a method of arrays, so similar to push or shift or include right. So concat is just one more, one more uh, of this method. And again, we can see all of the method here. And as I told you, there are a lot of them. Okay, just scroll down. Lot of, lot of, but don't worry about detail for all this method. So, for example, we can see here a push method. Okay. Uh, and uh, 
also uh, for example uh, so for this one that we are already learned about uh, and used so we can quickly see that uh, the push method the detail and example and so indeed the push method adds zero so simple or more element to the end of an array okay but sorry it is uh, in French so I don't say directly as you can see <clears throat> so this is kind of what we did ourselves previously and actually we can add multiple element which I didn't tell you by the time but this here works just as well but anyway this was just to show you a familiar method but let's return to uh, concat so here is a long uh, description okay as you can see of the method and here we have the exact syntax which many times looks a bit uh, intimidating and so I like to actually stick to the example here so whenever you need to know how a certain built-in method or function works in JavaScript you can always just uh, look it up on MDN. This is really the complete but unofficial JavaScript documentation. And in fact, many, many of things that I know about JavaScript come from, comes from, uh, from here, from MDN. So don't be afraid of doing any research that you need on this page or also on Stack Overflow. Anyway, here from uh, this example, we can understand kind of how the concat method works so we have array one and two and then uh, on array one we can call the concat method and as an argument paste in the second array and the result will be array three and then we log uh, that to the console so we we'll get a, B, C, D, E, F. And so that's the array 1, A, B, C, and then followed by array 2, essentially D, E, F. So <clears throat> I will just copy uh, this uh, syntax now. Okay. And I will paste it in uh, my uh, GS code. Then I use it to the reference. Just take it as a reference. Okay? Like this. And now I will get this whole function. Okay? I will put it here. And to not judge that one, but I still create a new one, of course. Huh? So I will, no, I will use here another uh, name, calc amplitude new, for example. And then here also we call the new one. So I will copy this uh, both, but I will put here new. Okay, and now here we need to change the argument. So remember that now this new function will receive two arrays of temperature. So I am just call uh, call them t1 and t2. Okay, not here. Sorry, not here. Sorry, here. T1 and T2. Here at the beginning of the function is where we will solve our problems. So the sub problem of merging the two arrays. So let's again just put uh, this uh, code here. I put it inside the function directly. Okay. Oops. 
we just format so just so uh, we see it is a reference exactly where we need it so what we want to do is to create a new array and I will uh, call it Tom's okay so const it's just a reference huh? I will delete of course this one huh? const Tom's equal and now I am calling Tom's because that's the name of the complete array that we already have there in the function so that's used to be the name of the argument of previous, previous uh, version of this function and now I can just say the array one okay so array one it is uh, t1 so simple which is of course uh, t1 and now dot concat method and then array two it is t2 so simple like this okay I have made the same thing as this one so now I can delete this one I don't need it and that's it and now let's just just look to the console uh, very quick uh, this new array so log toms okay and here then we need to call this uh, new function with two arrays so let's just create two arrays so here where is it uh, where is my uh, temperature no I will just call it directly not with temperature so with directly three five one it is the first array and the second is nine zero and five okay and now let's see oops not this one sorry <laughs> here let's see oops yeah of course of course i have uh, forgot to uh, rename the amplitude of course because i have used it before so compute new and now let's see good so what you see here it works perfectly okay so now we get this uh, one array which uh, include uh, all the elements basically of these two arrays that we pass into cork tomp amplitude new so this function and we can also see that 9 and 0 are the max and the minimum value and 9 minus 0 gives 9 which is then is this new amplitude value awesome so we solve this problem number two here successfully as well now and yeah so i hope that now you have a better idea of how to solve problems and especially how to do research using the tools that i just showed you in this video so that's google stack overflow and also the mdn documentation and as this one is in my opinion huh? actually the most important one i learned so much from mdn it is incredible so now in the future whenever something it is not working in your code and even during the course you can always try to figure out a solution on your own for example using google or stack overflow and so that will then be very helpful for your developer journey thank you so much brothers and sisters to uh, for all this course until this moment the course is very long be patient be patient so i will try to put each uh, new video uh, one week or each five days i will see it depends on my times but uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel please and to like this video so I will see you in the next video inshallah I tell you goodbye assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh